Hello and welcome back to World 360. Iraq, a country that has been rocked by war and political chaos, has faced political deadlock for the past seven months. The war-torn country has been without a government since general elections were held in October 2021. And domestic policies, especially counter-terrorism efforts against the remnants of ISIL, have suffered. There have even been calls for the parliament to be dissolved if political parties can't come to a consensus. But recent events offered a glimpse of hope. On 12th June, 73 Iraqi lawmakers from firebrand Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr's bloc decided to step down. Parliament Speaker Mohammad al-Halbusi accepted the resignations, adding that Sadr preferred to be a sacrifice and not a crippling cause. According to Iraqi laws, if a seat in parliament falls vacant, the candidate who obtains the second highest number of votes in their electoral district gets to replace them. So let's briefly try to understand how Muqtada al-Sadr became a popular figure in Iraqi politics. You must recall how in 2003 the US invaded Iraq on the pretext of disarming the country of weapons of mass destruction. It was in the years following that Sadr emerged as a major political player. He and his numerous followers battled the US occupation for years. And that seemed to pay off politically. As the report in Reuters points out, from 2018 onwards, Sadr's political organization, the Sadrist movement, has come to dominate the apparatus of the Iraqi state. By apparatus, the report means that Sadrists have a presence in almost every state institution in Iraq, from state-owned banks to state-owned oil bodies to interior defense and communication ministries too. What's interesting, though, is that Sadr isn't just anti-Western, but has also had differences with the Iranian regime, who he has accused of interfering in his country's affairs. Then again, his movement has also allegedly committed several brutalities against Arab Sunnis and the repression of activists, too. But in October last year, the Sadrists won 73 out of the Assembly's 329 seats. The Fateh Conquest Alliance, the political arm of the pro-Iran Hashad al-Shabi, came in second with 17 seats. This was quite a drop from the 48 seats it had had prior to the election, causing its supporters to take to the streets and term the election a fraud. Iraq's top court, however, dismissed their allegations of voter fraud and ratified the results. Now, the Southern Bloc has for months been unable to forge a coalition government in support of a new prime minister. But to form a government, a two-thirds majority or 220 members is needed. But boycotting of voting sessions has stalled this process. The Southern Bloc also seemed to be trying hard to form a government with limited presence of Iran-backed groups. But by stepping down, the Southern Bloc has created a space where political factions will perhaps come to some form of agreement, form a majority government and start serving the people. After all, there were growing calls to dissolve the parliament, which could have led to just more chaos. But it remains to be seen as to whether the withdrawal of Iraq's most powerful political movement from parliament is actually what the country needs. As a report in Al Jazeera points out, experts fear the withdrawal could invite more violence between Sadr's movement and rival groups. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Krishnakuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print or In and follow us on social media.